Welcome, and thanks for joining our Synology Solutions Seminar. Today we'll be discussing best practices for virtual environments utilizing Synology Network Detached Storage. Synology has a great solution for when you need virtual storage. Now, let's take a look. We are certified with VMware, Citrix, Windows Server, and OpenStack. We've had our longest running virtualization relationship with VMware. Our relationship with VMware started almost 10 years ago when we joined their TAP program. Soon after, we released our first VMware-ready NAS. We continue to improve our virtualization solutions with both hardware and software innovation. With our first all-flash NAS being released in 2016, and most recently, our new iSCSI manager in DSM 6.2. These innovations show our continued commitment to business storage solutions. Business users, such as Taishin International Bank, the largest bank in Taiwan, choose Synology for performance and reliability. Utilizing one of our all-flash arrays, Taishin can serve a database with over 8,000 users. After implementing link aggregation for dual 20 gigabit iSCSI channels, they are now able to provide a service with seven times the efficiency of their previous system. These deployments are enhanced by the advanced iSCSI features built into Disk Station Manager. With features such as VAAI, ODX, multipath, and thin provisioning, Synology is able to offer an extensible virtualization solution and improve virtual environments. Let's review a few of these features. In the past, moving data between LUNs required sending it from the NAS through the hypervisor back down to the NAS, causing network congestion. VAAI and ODX are features that allow the storage array to offload host processing and network traffic by moving data between LUNs without requiring that data to pass through the host. With hardware-assisted locking, creating multiple VMs is up to nine times faster. Block zeroing is up to 140 times faster, and copying a full virtual machine is over 30 times faster. Thin provisioning is another great feature that allows us to create more convenient virtual deployments. When limited on physical storage space, you can pre-allocate space on multiple LUNs to their desired size, then dynamically expand your storage capacity as needed. Thin provisioning makes planning and future growth of virtual environments more manageable. All these features are available in the new 6.2 release of DSM. iSCSI Manager is now a built-in application on each Synology NAS. We separated out iSCSI management from our storage manager to give better control and more options when it comes to iSCSI. We've also improved DSM's performance of file level LUNs, providing higher throughput with lower latency, up to a 50% increase in random write performance, as well as lightning fast snapshots, cloning, and replication. All of these improvements are based on the BTRFS file system. In earlier versions of DSM, creating a LUN had two options, file or block level. We used to say block level had the best access performance, but with our new improvements, file level is now the way to go. With our dedicated iSCSI development team, we can provide more features and better performance. We've deprecated block level LUN creation, and new LUNs will be created on BTRFS to provide access to these iSCSI features. Let's take a look at our new iSCSI manager in DSM 6.2 and how to create a LUN. All block level LUNs created prior to DSM 6.2 are still accessible. Let's take a look at the new iSCSI manager in DSM 6.2 and how to create a LUN. When we first open iSCSI manager, we'll see an overview of our LUNs, targets, and logs. Each card shows information specific to each of these three, respectively. We can expand upon the information provided in the overview in their respective sidebar tabs, such as the target tab found directly under overview in the sidebar. From the target tab, we can create new iSCSI targets and manage our existing ones. From the LUN tab, we can do the same for our LUNs. Creating, editing, managing, and removing LUNs is all done from this location. We can set up snapshots to protect our LUNs from the snapshot tab. Here we set our replication and retention rules. We also have some additional settings, as well as a location specifically for reviewing your logs. Now that you're familiar with the new iSCSI manager and able to create LUNs and targets, let's look at selecting a NAS for virtual storage. First, we need to know our IOPS requirement. IOPS measure the number of input and output operations per second performed by the environment. This number varies depending on the workload of the virtual machines. Next, we should know if we'll be needing a full SSD loadout 
or can utilize spinning disks with an SSD cache. For high performance environments, we recommend using solid state drives. We recommend using 10 gigabit ethernet for lower latency and faster access speeds. And of course, creating your LUNs on BTRFS to take full advantage of all the iSCSI features we've been discussing. Once we know our IOPS requirements, we should first look at the type of drives we should use with our deployment. The typical hard disk operates between 200 and 600 IOPS and keeps your average desktop computer running smoothly. But as we know, virtual deployments vary heavily. Deployments without intense IOP requirements could host multiple VMs per disk, while performance intensive deployments may require solid state drives to perform effectively. Synology has solutions for a wide range of virtual deployments and their performance needs. For serious performance, we have our flash station line, while most business use cases will be more than happy with our XS Plus performance line. Our performance series delivers amazing performance for smaller deployments. It all depends on exactly each VM and what it will be doing and how many IOPS are required. SSDs can cost quite a bit more than the traditional hard disk. For implementations where users want to take advantage of the capacity of spinning hard drives and the performance of SSDs, Synology has a solution, SSD caching. Our SSD cache advisor watches what data you're accessing most, then recommends the appropriate amount of SSD space required to achieve SSD level performance via a cache. With a minimum of two SSDs, a read-write cache provides better overall performance. Any model can utilize any open bays to create a cache. However, select desktop units have dedicated M2 slots specifically for creating a cache. Check out the specs page on models you're interested in to see if it provides dedicated SSD cache slots. Our last piece on optimizing virtualization has to do with the tuning of the virtual environment for the best performance when using Synology as a storage solution. When selecting a protocol, it is important to remember that NFS does not support multipath or redundancy or load balancing. Increasing the maximum transfer unit, or MTU, in your environment allows you to best utilize available bandwidth. This works particularly well in small or closed networks. Installing our snapshot manager on the virtual machine allows the client to notify the hypervisor to flush its cache so the snapshot can be taken without any missing data. Finally, we have some additional timeout settings to increase stability and mitigate potential network issues. These timeout settings will tell the hypervisor to continue attempting to reach the storage unit up to the set interval in the case of network issues or a high availability failover, significantly decreasing the likelihood of a crash. In addition to being certified storage and offering advanced features for virtualization, Synology also offers high performance yet cost effective hardware. Our all flash array, the FS3017, offers uncompromised performance at an incredible price. It features two six core Xeon processors, expands up to 72 drive bays and 512 gigabytes of RAM, offering up to 190,000 4K random IOPS for incredible performance in virtual environments. In addition to our heavy focus on performing as a storage solution for virtual environments, Synology now offers its own hypervisor directly on our NAS devices. With VMM, you can run your favorite version of Windows or distribution of Linux directly on your NAS. You can also virtualize instances of Disk Station Manager. Let's take a quick look around the Virtual Machine Manager interface. When we first open Virtual Machine Manager, we'll see an overview of all of our hosts, virtual machines, and VM storage arrays. Our next tab is where we can manage our virtual machines. From the Virtual Machine tab, we can create, manage, connect, and monitor each individual virtual machine. From the Image tab, we can manage all of our system images and create new images to deploy VMs. From the Protection tab, we can set up protection plans and schedules, as well as retention policies to implement snapshots and replication of our virtual machines. Thank you for watching this installment of the Synology Solution Seminars. To learn more, please visit Synology.com.